I seem to have something resembling a cold right now, and I've been popping freaking cough drops like they're Tic Tacs, so if my voice seems a little deeper than usual or I sound kind of nasally, that is the reason for that. Why, hello everyone, and welcome back to Samcast GS, where once again I had to figure out the freaking lighting situation, but now we're good. I think. Today I am going to be talking about a game called Betrayal Legacy that I played over the weekend with my girlfriend, her brother John, and her sister Hannah. There are actually two versions of the game. There is the regular Betrayal and then there is the Betrayal Legacy and we are not going to go into the specifics of the <laughs> Betrayal Legacy because it is wildly complicated and I can't possibly fit all of that explanation into a six to eight minute edited video. So here are the bare bones mechanics of the game. If you would like to know more you can go out and buy the game or you can just read the rule book which is kind of incomprehensible on its own but you know it's the kind of game where you have to play multiple times to actually figure out what you're doing which is ironic because John has actually played this game before twice before hence the legacy bit because there's different chapters and again I'm not going to go into that we spent I think a majority of the play time which ended up being like three and a half hours figuring out the rules of the game between our turns. So here are the basics. I've written them down on a piece of paper so you'll see me kind of looking off to the side because I was going to forget details if I didn't run it down. There's a haunted house. Everyone chooses a family crest and a player piece. All the player pieces are a little different. You decide on a name and age of your character. Each family has a set of four numbers which vary in value and those numbers are attributed to knowledge, sanity, speed, and might. Your speed number decides how many spaces you can move during your turn and the others will get into as they come up because good lord this is quite the roller coaster. So you use your player pieces to move about the house, you discover rooms and depending on the rooms that you discover you can encounter items, events, or omens. As the game progresses and more omens are discovered you have increasing chances to trigger the haunt, one of the players becomes a traitor, and finally there are two non-playable inhabitant characters, the cook and the farmhand, and they come into play as the game progresses. Now we know the basics, like I said, it doesn't cover even a fraction of how this game works but we'll kind of go into that as we go along as it becomes relevant because again I cannot explain the rest of these rules. Doesn't help that John, the one who roped us into the shenaniganery, doesn't quite understand the rules himself. Don't really blame him, the game is ridiculous. So I go first, I move my character to a new room and we discover that is the laboratory and I am also greeted with an event. So I am given an event card and the event card reads as such. Apparently there is a half buried skull in the ground. How you bury a skull in a stone tile in a laboratory is beyond me. But whatever, it's there and it's whispering something so I have to figure out what it's saying. And here is where the check rolls come into play. You see there are a whole bunch of dice that come with the game and every dice has ones, twos, and blank sides on them. And when you encounter an event or some other kind of thing that you're trying to do, sometimes it will ask you to make a knowledge, sanity, speed, or might roll. So you roll a number of dice corresponding with the current number assigned to that particular trait and your result decides the outcome of the event or whatever you're trying to do. So I had to make a knowledge check. My knowledge is three, so I roll three dice. By the way, a blank side of the dice is a zero, should probably point that out. So anyway, I make the knowledge check to see if I can lean in and figure out what the skull is saying. I failed that knowledge check, and what ended up happening was the skull bit me in the neck, and so I took two physical damage, which means that I have to knock the peg down on might, speed, or one of each. So I did one of each, my might went from four down to three, but my speed managed to stay at four. But if a particular trait gets too low, you end up on a skull and your character dies. So I'm bleeding from the neck, but my turn is not over. Oh no. You see the cook is also in the laboratory for some reason, and John has a script for the cook in this particular situation, which he proceeds to read, and it is just her rambling about something. Meanwhile, I'm standing here like, I am bleeding from the neck. Could you maybe get me some bandages or something? So the cook leaves, and since I landed on a room tile that has an omen, an item, or an event, my turn comes to an end. Just a great start to this game already. Oh, something else I forgot to mention, my family apparently has the deed to the house from the previous chapter of this game, and that card has a special effect that we'll get into later. And so now it's Liz's turn and she takes a different route, discovers a couple rooms and lands on a tile that gives her an item. She ends up getting a freaking crossbow, which will become important during the nightmarish portion of this game, pun intended, 
you'll see why. And so John's turn rolls around, he moves a couple of spaces and is greeted with another event, but he actually makes a successful roll and he gets a sacred artifact, which once again is vital for the nightmarish portion of this game. So let's recap. John has a sacred artifact, Liz has a crossbow, I have a bleeding neck wound, and I have taken two physical damage. Hannah's turn goes very similarly, except she lands on an omen, and she has to draw an omen card. Now the omen card has a special effect you can use at one point, but here's the kicker. For every omen card that is in play, you have to roll a dice, and if the dice reaches a certain amount, the haunt begins. Because we currently only have one omen card in play, the haunt can't really begin, so her turn ends. And then it's my turn again. I move a couple spaces, and I fall down a coal chute, which I didn't take any physical damage, but now I'm stuck in the basement and have to find my way back to the stairs. By the way, there is a basement, a ground floor, an upper level, and then an outside portion. So I continue moving and I land on an item space and I'm like, yes, please give me a good item. And I got a flintlock pistol. I was like, yeah, this is good. I have a weapon. This is turning around. Then it turns out that John accidentally gave me an item card for the ground floor, but I was in the basement. So he had to give me a basement item. So I traded my flintlock pistol for this mask that allows me to avoid one damage once. It's a sacred artifact though. Fair trade, I guess. So we continue this pattern of me failing roll after roll. Liz ends up stacked with weapons and sacred artifacts. John has a couple items, Hannah has a sacred artifact, and I discovered a bucket which allowed me to heal one of my damaged things, healed up my might, so I'd be back at four. So then on one of Liz's turns, she gets another omen card, and it turns out that that triggered the haunt. So Hannah, for some stat reason, becomes the traitor. I'm really sick of this lighting fluctuation, but it's fine. She becomes the traitor, and she is given her own rule book, which she goes off on her own and reads, and she has an objective that she's trying to accomplish, and we are trying to stop her from accomplishing that. This is made problematic by the fact that Hannah, much like me, has never played this game before. So here's how the haunt goes down. The cook and the farmhand, who by the way I met just wandering around the basement, they're put on the top floor where Hannah is, incidentally, and there is a light that appears outside, and a nightmare creature that is now standing in front of the front door. It can't move, but at the end of every one of Hannah's turns, anyone who's outside takes one mental damage, which means they have to knock their knowledge or sanity peg down one and be closer to death. Hannah's goal is to convince the two inhabitants to go toward the light and be sacrificed because they made it deal with the devil. Never a good idea. If they reach the light, then they die and we lose. You know what's funny is the room has slowly become darker as I've been describing this, like we're getting closer and closer to our doom and the darkness within. Our goal is to prevent those people from reaching the light and somehow kill the nightmare. Couple things about the nightmare. It can only be hit with firearms and it has to be a speed check and it has a speed of six, which means that Hannah gets to roll six dice every time we attack it and we at most have four. Also, in addition to outspeeding the nightmare, we have to have sacred artifacts to plant on the nightmare after we successfully attack it. We have to do that three times. So Hannah can make the players move in one of two ways. We're only going to describe one. She can land on the space and talk to one of the inhabitants and make a knowledge check. If she wins the knowledge check, then she can move the inhabitants further toward the light. We can do the same thing. We can land on that space and then try to convince them to move away from the light. But if we fail our knowledge check, then she gets to move the inhabitants toward the light. So we're scrambling around trying to figure out what to do. We end up with this convoluted plan. All of us will be on the tile of the monster, the nightmare outside, and we will just be passing Liz's crossbow between us and going inside and outside to help spare our mental damage as we do so. Throughout that entire thing, we didn't hit the nightmare once. Meanwhile, my bumbling idiot of a character is failing every single check roll of this entire game. I have not contributed to my allies in the least. I had a chance to contribute. I went up to the second floor where Hannah was and I tried to attack her because if we can kill her, character, then we only have to deal with the monster and the monster's method of moving the characters, which is a little more difficult for Hannah. And so I throw a punch and I miss and I take a physical damage. John and Liz are optimistic because you see the hero pieces act as obstacles for the two inhabitants. And so I'm still on a tile with the inhabitants. So even if Hannah 
tries to move them, they will lose a movement and it will be less successful. Problem is, Hannah aces her knowledge roll and they can move five spaces. So I failed as a freaking meat shield. Eventually we get the inhabitants to locations where it's really hard for Hannah to move them. We decide that we're gonna explore the house, get some more items, and hopefully get some stat boosts so that we have a better chance against the nightmare. I'm moving around and failing checks here and there, taking damage. John, meanwhile, has the crossbow, and he's outside trying to face the nightmare, but he thinks, I still have some mental fortitude, so I can explore outside, hopefully find an item, and still be able to attack the nightmare. He moves one space, and takes two mental damage from the event that happens, and he immediately dies. This part is gonna be weirdly spliced into the rest of the video because I forgot to mention something else. Toward the end, after John died, we were down to two sacred artifacts, but we needed three. Anna, when she became the traitor, had to drop her sacred artifact on the top floor. I completely forgot about the deed to the house, which allowed me to sacrifice one movement so that I could warp to any discovered tile instantly. So I use it because the farmhand is on the stairwell, so I was like, I'll grab the sacred artifact and then I'll move down to the stairwell and convince the farmhand to back off a little bit. So I warp, grab the artifact, move down to the farmhand, make a knowledge roll, and you guess it, I failed. Just another fantastic victory for my character. And finally, by the end, we realize that Hannah missed a part in her rule book where the nightmare should have been dealing mental damage to us every time we attacked it and we should have been dead long time ago. And that is our game of betrayal. Because this took forever to explain, I don't think I have time to do the dinosaur of the day. I'm sorry, I will pick up on that next week. Thanks for tuning in. If you would like to subscribe, you're more than welcome to do so. There's a link to my channel in the description. There is also a link to my Facebook page where I'll be posting updates and stuff. Don't forget to click the notification bell so that you can be notified when I make new videos. So thanks for tuning in. Goodbye.